Is that a... There are birds nesting on a... Freaking... There's owls here? A large tawny owl surveys the room from a cleverly selected perch and, occasion and makes his occasional inquiries. A lethal nocturnal hunter, he presumably keeps the premise cleared of unwanted rodents. His presence may account for the fact that the room is kept in a kind of twilight, lit only by the stove and whatever light passes through the shop through very dirty windows. <sighs> oh yeah, Watson did mention Toby. The dog is an ungainly brown and white long-haired floppy-eared mongrel, half spaniel, half greyhound, with a steady eye and a waddling gait. He is known by a select few as the best tracking dog in England, and perhaps the whole of Europe. Now that just seems, uh, I don't know, disingenuous, but if it says half, if it's, if even half of that is true, then that means we might be able, we can definitely use this guy to uh, survey the Surrey docks. Have you seen your friend, the Badger, Watson? I am not ashamed to admit that I am fully prepared to jump on this table the moment that I do, Holmes. I make no claim to understand what goes on in that beast's so-called mind. Now that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> anyway, I don't really think there's anything else to look at. Let's talk to Sherman. Let's get to work. Greetings, Sherman. I trust I find you well? Oh, it's you, Sherlock. What a surprise. And you've brought Mr. Watson. Dr. Watson. How nice. I hope you've paid your respects to the animals. They always like to see old friends. Regrettably, we are not here on a social call. We have need of your treasure's extraordinary skill. Ah, you've come for Toby, then, and not a moment too soon. He's been moping around all morning. I believe he's pining for a feline friend that has passed over into the great beyond. A good chase should be just a ticket for lifting his spirits. I should like to borrow him, then. Thank you, old friend. Of course, Sherlock, and here, you'll need his leash. Okay. Let's use leash on Toby. Come on. Seems to be a well-trained dog. That's weird. I didn't actually use him to... Huh. He's in there, Watson. I'd stake my life on it. I've never known Toby to err. <laughs> right, let's take a look around. Closer examination reveals that the side of the crate was recently opened and that it has been nailed tightly shut again. Interesting. The Thames. The sparkling river's true condition can be guessed by looking at the refuse strewn along its banks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know Industrial Revolution. Thames, ri Thames River looks like crap, just like the Potomac River looks like now. Oops, I'm sorry. Didn't mean to didn't mean to insult my own capital there. Um, yeah, about that. Potomac is kind of dirty, but then most rivers are these days, with all the pollution, animal refuse, and all that stuff flowing downriver. Well. see here what else do we have Watson Blackwood most certainly entered the warehouse through this door draw your revolver Watson let us seize the malefactor straight away I am unarmed Holmes you didn't tell me that firearms might be required here perhaps under the circumstances we should not be too hasty quite right quite right doctor I nearly lost my head caution is in order Blackwood is unquestionably vicious, and he may be armed. We know he's not alone. As always, Holmes, you've raised the most pertinent issues. Let us learn more before proceeding. Perhaps we can spy on him. There's a window here, after all. Queen Victoria was still in nappies when this window was last cleaned. The urban soot and grime of the Industrial Revolution have rendered it virtually opaque. 
Darn it, I can't see it. What's this? A tin pail with thin rope attached to the handle sits precariously on the edge. On a ledge. Why? Why exactly is that sitting there? An oil lamp burns steadily with this iron holder. Let's see. A 30-foot length of strong, though weathered, rope. What about this manifest thing? If this guy is meeting here, he might be a shipper or something. Let's see here. According to the ship's manifest, the Carthago carried a load of olive oil from the Cadiz, but a simple sniff of the offloaded cargo indicates something stronger than olive oil filled these barrels. Well, let's see. The ship is a clipper named Carthago. It appears deserted. Oak casks with the standard 36 imperial gallon capacity. One of them is leaking greasy, acrid ooze from its bung. It's, it is obviously low-grade sherry wine destined to be served at some of, the, of London's less discriminating public houses. Hmm. I guess they wanted to uh, avoid an excise tax. Wait, I don't think they have alcohol excise taxes in Britain. Well, someone will correct me as soon as this thing gets published, so I'll probably hear an earful from people who actually live in England. Anyway, we gotta get we gotta get in, but I don't want to open that door until I know absolutely certain I know what's through what's on the other side. I need to clean this window. That pail may be just the thing we need. If we can move a barrel over there, we can stand on top of it, like we did with the moose head. We should be able to grab the pail. Get, get up on the barrel, you stupid prick. Idiot. Pick up the barrel, shall we? Let's get down. We'll need to move this thing back. If we have any chance of assaulting the door. Hey, what's this? Sorry. It's a rag. A standard tin water bucket of the type used for swabbing decks. There is a thin rope attached to the handle. It's empty. I might as well use some water and see if we can't clean up that window. Although, frankly, if you're using Thames, if you're using the water from the Thames to be cleaning this window, I'm not even sure if it's if the window is going to get any cleaner. We we'll used a rag on the pail to get a sopping wet rag. Use the wet rag. On the now clean window. Stacked barrels conceal part of the room. A plank has been propped up against the inside of the door to keep it shut. Further into the warehouse, two men are conferring. One of the men is wearing a top hat and matches Blackwood's description. He looks furtively around the warehouse. The other man examines a large pendant. Ha. Huh. The pendant. Didn't didn't the opera didn't the opera owner say something about that gaudy pendant? Guess we know what was missing from Sarah's body. Except now we gotta figure out some way to assault the door. Oh, of course it's locked. It's locked. It's locked. Just like in Jedi Knight when Kyle Gartaran was like, Locked. I need a key card. It's locked. Why can't I just go Duke Nukem on the door and just blast it open? Well, let's see if there are any tools to help us open this door. Interesting. Looks like a hammer. 